that is valuable. And, and there are many people that have uh, coined terms or pin terms uh, about the mind that has caused people to think that the mind is valuable. The National Negro College Fund says that a mind is a terrible thing to waste. I heard the old days say that your body is here with me, but your mind is on the other side of town. Y'all act like y'all been saved all your life. Uh, Ray Charles even said it. He wrote a song that he said he had Georgia on his mind. Matter of fact, ghetto boys, when I was growing up, I uh, had a song that said, My mind's playing tricks on me. Mm -hmm. Even R. Kelly wrote a song that said, My mind is telling me. <laughs> There's some value to the mind. Bill Robinson wrote a song that said that my mind is gone. Yeah. Said the Holy Ghost. And some of y'all really went there when I said I'm Kevin, didn't you? Yeah, yeah I know you went all the way there. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh-huh. But the mind is bad. And one thing I found out that when a person has a made-up mind, it's hard to detour them, it's hard to distract them, and it's hard to diminish their efforts or their attitude. And I didn't say it was impossible, but I did say it's hard. And why is it hard? Because they have purposed themselves, they have prepared themselves, and positioned themselves in their state of mind. And I want to know today, I hate to keep bothering you, I know it's hot, and I know some of you are ready to get home. But I believe I have at least three folk in this house today that can say that you are purpose prepared and positioned. Yeah. After all that you've been through, you are purpose prepared and positioned. Yeah. You've been lied, talked about, mistreated, but you're purpose prepared and positioned. Yeah. Go catch that doing your back, but you're purpose prepared and positioned. Go catch that lies your name, but you're purpose prepared and positioned. Yeah. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, yeah. he's talking about me. Yeah. After all that I've been through, I see. going to do. But you have to have a made up mind to stay on the Lord's side. Paul here in the book of Romans is stressing that in order for us to survive, we must exemplify what we're made of. And I want to ask you today, and I'm not just talking to you all, but I want to ask all of you today, are you a whiner or are you a worshiper? Are you a powder or are you a praiser? Are you a huh, yeah, contrary or are you connected? Are you determined or are you tuned? Do you have a made up mind? It's here in this chapter as I was reading. I found that Paul uh, had to maintain a made up mind. Uh, because he had to remind the enemy of what he was made of. Uh, the reason Paul could do this because he resided on the Lord's side. He was a recipient of the Lord's sacrifice. And then he experienced the residue of the Lord's sacrifice. Uh, yeah, yeah, he, would, he resided on the Lord's side because on his Damascus Road experience, God knocked him down and had him to make a choice. And Paul said, I'm going to live for you. Then not only that, but he was a recipient of the Lord's sacrifice because he received salvation in spite of what he had already done. Yeah. But then he received the residue because of his position, because he received the Holy Ghost. Yes, uh, and I want to know if there's anybody in here glad you got some res uh, uh, the, the residue of what God left for us. Yeah. Because if it wasn't for the Holy Ghost, yeah. some of you would have lost your mind a long time ago. If it wasn't for the Holy Ghost, your worship wouldn't be real. And if it wasn't for the Holy Ghost, some of you would have left a long time ago. But you ought to tell somebody, thank God for the Holy Ghost. In here, there are several things. I promise you I won't be before you long. But the first thing he does, he dispels condemnation. Because if you go back to verse 1, uh, in verse 1 he says, he makes it known that condemnation is not for the children of God. 
Paul concludes chapter 7 with the testimony of how in the midst of his conversion, many could only see his past, but God dispelled his past and provided him with a future. And I know I got some used to folk up in here. I know you say you're sanctified now, but I got some used to folk up in here. You used to do some stuff. Yeah, yes, you used to club. Uh -huh. You used to drink. Well, you used to smoke. Well, you used to. Uh, uh -huh. Maybe the reason some of y'all can't say amen because you ain't used to it. Yeah. Maybe you still do it. But remember, I got some folks that been delivered from what you used to do. Yeah. And Paul said, if the cows I've been delivered, I do not have to walk under condemnation. And let me tell you something. Don't let folk condemn you by what you used to do. Yeah. 
But what he does here, he uses her name, which means our condition has a connection yeah. uh, to the promise. Now, when it's written, it's written in the perfect active indicative mood. Yeah. Now, he's basically saying that when Paul writes this, he said, based on what happened on the cross, I can have assurance that my stand is stable yeah. and not wavering. Yeah. He's indicating in spite of the facts right. in my life, I know God's in charge. Yeah. And I believe I got some folk in here, you got some facts in your life. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, without some y'all here, I know it's hot, I know you're ready to go home, but you all just go ahead and say amen anyhow. Yeah. I know you got some facts in your life. Yeah. It's a fact that you once were a sinner on your way to hell. Yeah. It's a fact that some of you were some homemongers. And I got some dope heads in here, that's a fact. It's a fact that some of you have done some stuff that you don't even want to tell nobody. But what God did on the cross, he turned our facts, come on here, into his glory. When he says, uh, we know that's certainty. Uh, when he says all things, that's completeness. When he says work together, that's continuity. When he says for good, that's hunting. When he says, who loves the love? Yeah. That's conditional. So this verse tells me if my condition is right, then I can be certain that I will be complete with everything working for my good. Yeah. Now let me go. <clears throat> he dispels our condemnation. He details our connection. He defines our condition. But then it asks me, he defends our correction. Yes, all right. All right. Paul understands uh, that his change was by the hands of God. Uh -huh. yes. And he really knows that his outcome should have been much worse. Uh -huh. His outcome should have been hmm, worse than what God justified him when Paul decided that to acknowledge who God was. Yeah. The word justified in the Greek means to render righteous. Now well, that means that the Lord has caused him to be like he should have been in the first place. Uh -huh. We were not designed for sin. No. And so Paul says that I'm glad that the Lord positioned me yeah. where I should have been the whole time. But when man messed up, it put us out of position. So God, through his merciful majesty, did not reposition us, but he just put us back in our proper position. So Paul is about to make a statement of commitment based on on confirmation, justification, and the consideration of God. You see, I found out if God repositioned us, that means I lost my position. But what I like about God, because he predestined us, he was saving your position for you. Him 
Amen. I, I tell you, you know, the Church of Harvard, they really been, you know, they've been showing some love. They really been doing that. And you know, it be times that um, you know, Pastor Lou, he said, "Here, yeah, man, let me give you a donation, give you something." You know, I tell him a lot of times, "Man, I don't want that." It, you know, I'm doing this out of love. Amen. See, I'm led by the Spirit of God to come over here. Amen. I didn't just come over here on my own. Amen. God is doing that. Amen. Amen. And I am blessed. I'm blessed by the word that man he really preached out his heart on today. Amen. Amen. Uh, Pastor Lewis said he preached from Roman 8. I preached from Roman 8 this morning. Amen. 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 So you see that God is working in this season. He in control. Amen. He in control of the good and the bad. Amen. Hallelujah. How many love the Lord? Amen. Amen. You know, uh, I do want to say this though. I, if I encourage you, notice a lot of you were just sitting when the Spirit of God was moving. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, the Lord spoke to me one day. He said, the anointing is in your praise. Amen. That's what it said. Amen. Amen. And, uh, with Peter and Jane, when they, when they was praying, hallelujah, they didn't even realize at one time the shepherd was off their feet. But he told them to come forward. See, they had to move. It was released. See, sometimes you have to really give God some praise. Ain't that good? Come on, give God some praise. Just one time. Hallelujah. Don't take much.